thanks to Mark there. Uh, let's turn to Lego. They're celebrating their 90th birthday this week and have marked the occasion with this uh, rotating cake made of more than 94,000 Lego bricks. Who made that? It is nine layers representing the nine decades since it was founded in 1932 and is on display at its headquarters in the Danish town of Belund. That's a lot of pieces of Lego you could step on, isn't it? Thanks so much for watching. Do stay with us on BBC World News. This is Impact, I'm Yalda Hakim. Before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea, are these new images evidence of a big win for Ukraine? Western Defence Ministers meet in Copenhagen to discuss sending more powerful weapons to Kyiv. We'll be getting reaction from Ukraine's former defense, uh, Deputy Defence Minister, also in the programme. France battles a monster fire near Bordeaux as the fourth heat wave of the summer sweeps across the country. 10,000 people have been evacuated from the southwest. America's top diplomat raises the case of the detained hotel Rwanda hero as he meets President Kagame in Kigali. That's all coming up here on Impact. Welcome to the program. We begin in Ukraine, where satellite images show the extensive damage to a Russian airbase in occupied Crimea that was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. Ukraine has not officially acknowledged that it was responsible for the explosions, but there is growing speculation over its involvement. Russia has blamed an accident at an ammunition store and denied that any planes were destroyed. OK, <laughs> Alina, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, do stay with us. We've got lots more coming up in the next edition of Impact. Now, this is Impact on BBC World News. I'm Yalda Hakim. Let's turn to Rwanda now, where the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has expressed serious concerns about the human rights situation in the country after talks with President Paul Kagame. Mr. Lincoln said he had raised U.S. concerns about the detention of Paul Rusesabagina, who is credited with saving hundreds of lives during the Rwandan genocide. This is Mr. Lincoln's last stop in a three-country tour of Africa. Well, I'm joined now by Beverly Ocheng, uh, Africa specialist from BBC Monitoring. She is live for us from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Um, what is uh, Mr. Blinken, uh, US Secretary of State, hoping to achieve from this uh, trip? OK, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much uh, for bringing us up to date there. An amber heat warning for large parts of England and Wales has come into force as temperatures look likely to peak at 37 Celsius over the next four days. The Met Office has also warned there's an exceptional risk of fires spreading in many places. Our correspondent Celestina Olulode reports. Well, let's stay on the heat waves now. Wildfires burning in southwest France have forced more than 10,000 people from their homes and scorched 62 square kilometres. The worst hit is the Gironde region, which is struggling with so-called zombie fires. Last month's blazes reigniting because of record temperatures and drought. Now, France has had nearly six times more fire damage in 2022 than any other year since 2006. 
Over 570 square kilometers have gone up in flames. The Gironde wildfire is one of many that have broken out across Europe this summer, triggered by heat waves that have baked the continent and brought record temperatures. I'm joined now by Robert Stefan Stefanski, who is Chief of Climate Services at the WMO, of course, taking a look at weather all around the world. I mean, when you take a look at, at what you're seeing, the pictures are, are so stark and, and frightening, of course, for people that are living in those areas. How do you explain exactly what is going on? Thank you so much uh, for talking us through a little bit of that global response there. Really interesting uh, to hear his perspective. I just want to mention as well, Yalda Hakim, who was presenting this hour. She's absolutely fine, but she had to leave at the moment. Uh, stay with us here on Impact. Coming up in the next few minutes, we're going to continue our coverage of the European heat wave and turn to the River Rhine, where water levels are so low, freight is actually grinding to a halt. Hello, this is Impact. I'm Nuala McGovern. Before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea, these new images evidence perhaps of a big win for Ukraine. The challenges of identifying the fallen fighters in Ukraine, we report from a village that was deep inside Russian occupied territory. Now the locals, they're digging up the bodies of Russian soldiers who've been killed in the fighting. After they've been bagged, they'll be taken away for DNA sampling and eventually they'll be repatriated to Russia itself. The German authorities warn about the increasing threat to traffic on the River Rhine as the ongoing drought conditions will see water levels fall further. That's all coming up on Impact. Welcome to the program. Well, we begin with the war in Ukraine. It is impossible to accurately know how many people have been killed since Russia invaded the country. The challenges in identifying and repatriating soldiers killed on either side means that according to the Ukrainian government, only around 400 fallen fighters have been returned home. As Wira Davis reports from Eastern Ukraine, where occupied villages are taken back, it is a painfully slow and also difficult process for those people whose job it is to recover the dead. Do stay with us on impact still to come. The German authorities warn about the increasing threat to traffic on the River Rhine as the ongoing drought conditions will see water levels fall further. This is Impact on BBC World News. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, pregnant women have been under extra pressure, especially when taking cover in shelters or basements. Doctors say premature births have been notably higher in regions where active military operations are being conducted. And getting the right support, be it warmer surroundings or breathing apparatus to babies that are born early, has been a huge challenge, not least for international donors supplying British-made equipment, as Mark Lobel has been finding out. Just want to turn over to Beirut for a moment. Uh, this is a story that has been developing. So there is a man who has taken a number of people hostage uh, in a bank. You'll probably know about the financial crisis that has been there, that people have not been able to withdraw their money sometimes that's been deposited in banks. Well, um, apparently this is in the Hamra district. Um, he, This gentleman, he wants to uh, withdraw his money. He's keeping people hostage. He says he's going to set fire to himself if he's not allowed to withdraw his money so of course uh, a lot of issues uh, obviously there and you're seeing some of the security personnel that have gathered outside that bank. I'll bring you more on that if we get it during the coming hour.
Hello, this is Impact. I'm Nuala McGovern. Before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea, new images could potentially show a big win for Ukraine. Western defence ministers meet in Copenhagen to discuss sending more powerful weapons to Kyiv. We'll hear from Ukraine's former deputy defence minister. Also in the programme, France battles a monster fire near Bordeaux as the fourth heatwave of the summer sweeps across the country. 10,000 people have been evacuated from the southwest. America's top diplomat raises the case of the detained Hotel Rwanda hero as he meets President Kagame in Kigali. That's all coming up on Impact. Welcome to the program. We begin in Ukraine, where satellite images show the extensive damage to a Russian airbase in occupied Crimea. It was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. Now, Ukraine has not officially acknowledged that it was responsible for the explosions, but there is growing speculation over its involvement. Russia has blamed an accident at an ammunition store and denied that any planes were destroyed. Really interesting. I, I like also that you have some of the aspects that might help uh, the regular person and when they see these huge, I suppose, uh, consequences of this extreme heat, uh, some stuff that they can do uh, to help themselves. Now stay with us on Impact. Still to come, what happened when Meta's bot became a little too clever for its owner? This is Impact on BBC World News. Let's turn to Rwanda now, where the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has expressed serious concerns about the human rights situation in the country after talks with President Paul Kagame. Mr. Blinken said he had raised US, US concerns about the detention of Paul Rusabagina, who is credited with saving hundreds of lives during the Rwandan genocide. This is Mr. Blinken's last stop in a three-country tour of Africa. And here is BBC Monitoring Africa specialist Beverly Ochiang assessing his goals. Well, North Korea's leader's sister, Kim Yo-jong, speaking there. And it is worth noting that South Korea has called those accusations baseless. Now, just before we go, let's talk about the heat again. I want to show you these incredible pictures from California where hot temperatures and strong winds formed a fire nado. Uh, hundreds of firefighters were called to tackle the blaze, which spread during a bushfire. No one was harmed. And the Los Angeles County Fire Department said no structures were immediately threatened. You can get in touch with me and the team on Twitter. I'm at BBC Nula. Thanks very much for watching Impact. Hello there. Heatwave is the big story across the north and the west of the European.